Morning everybody, I think we're on day nine. Join us today, we're heading further north again. We are heading to Songnefellet, the scenic route there. Um, and that takes us up towards Lom, and then we'll turn northwest. And we're gonna head towards the Garanga Trollstegen route. Here in uh, Ladle or Ladle Soiree, depending uh, which map you seem to be looking at as to what it's called. Um, it's seven o'clock in the morning, the campsite is silent. Um, I don't know where everybody is, um, but uh, we're going to get a cup of tea on, going to check our routes for today, um, make sure we know where we're going. So we're going to head up to um, across the, this fjord first on the boat um, over to uh, Gortner. And Gortner is the start of the um, Sognefellet route, and that takes us up to Lom. So that's one of the scenic routes. Another one we'll be able to tick off. We're going to uh, get our cup of tea on, as usual, make some porridge, and uh, start packing up. The weather's looking a bit ropey this afternoon, so we'll get sorted out and, uh, as I say, get packed and uh, get on the road. Great campsite. You can see the weather coming in from over there. Actually, the weather's going to be coming in from behind us all day, so... Um, if we get going and it's dry, we might be able to keep just ahead of the weather, we'll see. And now a little modest setup. Oh, problem. That stove looks like it's out of gas. But luckily, look what Wilbur's got. Hidden away in here. It's okay, we're still on for a cup of tea. So with that emergency over with and dealt with, we can get sorted out, get packed up as usual. Doesn't take too long now, we've got the hang of this. All packed up, ready to go, it's about 9am. Um, let's have a quick walk around and we'll just show you a bit of the, the campsite and the fjord and the, all the boatyard and stuff that's there and um, we'll get on the road. For the cabins, nice outlook onto the marina. That's what you call it, not a boatyard. It's a pretty cool thing, I do like the wooden houses. They're good at wood houses. There's the Laidle Hotel that looked almost deserted last night when I went past. I wasn't even sure it was open. Not a bad view on a morning. Beats looking out of a glass box in a city, that's for sure. Right, let's get on the road. First job, we've got about 10 k's to a ferry crossing. It's certainly a surreal backdrop to the campsite here. Highly recommended if you're in the area. So I wander our way out, and this guy on the right here, you see, gives us a wave. I was talking with him in the evening. They were from Holland, and he was, yeah, was very pleased to talk about the bike. It's all about Wilbur. So we get going. It's only 10k to the ferry. Unfortunately, almost 7k of that is inside this one tunnel, and these tunnels just seem to get longer. But anyway, it's all part of it, but that's why we're trying to avoid them as much as we can. So we'll take a deep breath and hope Wilbur's in a good mood. There we go. We're in there, at least we've got lights that work. But when we pop out the other side, you can see it's rather wet and it's just gonna get wetter. Oh well, we'll just deal with it. Underneath those cameras, they're the auto pass toll cameras and some of them are speed cameras as well. So you've gotta be careful. Not that we were speeding with Wilbur. There's our ferry just coming in, so we might have timed it okay for this one. So that will be in in 10 minutes, so we'll jump on this. We're in Fodmes now. Uh, we're going to go across to the other side over there. And that will take us up towards um, Sondal. Turn right there, um, and then we're heading um, up onto the tourist route. And that's going to take us, I think it's called Route 55, which is supposed to be one of the famous routes. So looking forward to that. So this is ferry crossing number eight on the journey so far and we're still a long way from the Arctic Circle. It was only a short ferry crossing there, that wasn't too bad, but we're straight into another tunnel. Surprise, surprise. Good job Wilbur's behaving himself in tunnels today. I think that's because they're the only dry place we end up going. 
So it doesn't take us too long to get to Gorkner and that's the start of the Sogner fillet. And that is Norway's highest mountain pass at over 1400 metres. There's it on the tourist board in the snow. Start of the Sogner fillet. <coughs> uh, this is Gorkner, the town. Um, it's been really wet this morning. Um, it's only a little bit wet now. Um, so I'm going to try and run the camera on the helmet with all the doors on. Um, so it's waterproof. Yeah, Sogna Fellet. This is the highest mountain pass in Norway. 1,434 metres we're going to be at when we go. That's what it says there. So um, this is the little tourist board thing on the uh, the way into Gorkna. Uh, there's somebody's jeep given up. I rented a jeep in America once. That broke down too. Let's go, Wilbur. You can see it's getting pretty wet. And anyway, there we go. Hand in front of the headlamp. Any old bike rider will know that. Check that your headlight's working. I didn't need to worry though, I never had a problem with that. But we're on the road. It's very wet, but you keep thinking, oh, it's going to brighten up, it's going to brighten up. Anyway, this is Sognafjord, and we ride along here for about 20 kilometres, ducking in and out of the odd tunnel, but most of the time we're running at fjord level, and the colours here were amazing. The, it was so vivid blue, aquamarine almost, I had to keep stopping and having a look. So this fjord, it's known as the king of the fjords and it's the largest and deepest fjord in Norway. 205 kilometres inland from the ocean uh, and that goes to Skolden and we're just going to come into that town in a minute and it's up to 1308 metres deep at its deepest point. But yeah the colour of the water was just amazing. Uh, I never saw another fjord this colour in all the time we were there. So the roads are pretty good, they're quiet they're very wet, but it's getting close to lunchtime. There's a joker. It's rude not to stop and get some lunch, so we will. That's a pretty good view. This reminds me of Japan, where you get the mist hanging in the hills like this. Look at that, amazing. And the sky's brightened up too. Right, let's get on with it. And this section here has to be one of the best sites on all of the trip that we had. Alongside the aquamarine lake with steam coming off it, with the clouds in the hills behind it and the waterfall in the background. That's a pretty good view and you don't see that every day. It's just like the Dales. That is a pretty mad view. So we continue winding our way up here. There's hairpin bends, there's smooth roads, there's hardly any traffic. And as we're climbing, our first main port of call is Tatagro, which is a climbing hotel used by the mountaineers up there. And this hotel building that's there was actually built in 2002 because the old one burnt down. But the owner of it actually died in a tsunami in Thailand in 2004, bizarrely enough but it's a great location and popular with climbers. And one of the interesting things to see is, yes, there's people with motorhomes wheezing their way up the hill, but bizarrely enough, they're on one of the highest mountain passes in Northern Europe. They've got motorcycles and they're towing them on the trailer. Why aren't they riding them? 
pretty good but as soon as it stopped raining I'm going to put the camera back on the handlebars so I can make sure it's charged up for the top. Wow what a road and we're only a third of the way along it. So we continue winding our way upwards these are really very smooth roads I don't know how Norway manages to get good smooth roads that get so icy in winter. There's snow sticks you can tell it's snowy the Dales have snow sticks too Anyway, we're at 1400 metres, but it's still quite warm, 11 degrees. We've stopped at the Corp and Lookout, and what a lookout it is. Look at that scenery. That's magnificent. Back on the road, we're on the high plateau now. This is the highest point on the road, and this is one of those iconic shots with the road going up and down like a serpentine. We're passing these snow banks, and those snow banks would be about four or five metres high in winter. Well, it's not every day you're at 1400 metres and look up and see a glacier. But there we are again, we rode alongside this for a while. Just fantastic. And then we start winding our way down the other side. And these hairpins, some of these hairpins have a radius, an inside radius of about one metre. They're very tight, but luckily the traffic's very quiet and the roads are very smooth. It's just a bit wet, that's all. So steady away. And the road we're on now, this is still the Route 55, it's going to run all the way down this valley, all the way to Lom. The scenery that we get down in the valley is quite amazing. It's getting near lunchtime and I'm hungry. I've got my lunch with me and that sign is for the Lee Assenden picnic spot. That'll do nicely, thank you. Well, how about that? That's enough riding for now. Lunchtime, we've got a picnic spot next door to the Raging River. So uh, yeah, let's get lunch out. Ho, ho. Lunch time, beside the river. So we've got some fresh buns from the bakery this morning. Now we've got cheese, we've got the terrine stuff that we had left from yesterday, some crisps, some fruit, and if I'm still hungry, a granola bar. And what a perfect spot. Um, we're just on the way down now, I think we're at about 800 metres, and um, well, that was just mind blowing, wasn't it? And we've still got another 30 kilometres of this route to do as we follow this bar in the valley down to Lom. That's it, lunch done. Let's get to Lom. You can see the rain had caught us up again and it was extremely wet rain too. Anyway, we're going to see, we're going to head down the valley and try and outrun it like we did earlier. Hopefully we can. I was pretty wet by now, but you can see ahead at the end of the valley, it looks brighter. I keep telling myself that, Richard, it looks brighter over there. Just keep riding. It looks brighter. I think I said that to myself for about the next eight days after this. There's some mad bloke on a push bike heading uphill into the weather there. No, thank you.
as we start to approach Lom, you can see that we've got blue sky. It had stopped raining, the roads have dried out, and the scenery just opens up. This was a very nice run down into the town there. So this is the outskirts of the town, we're just rolling in here and I thought I'd turn the bike around at this roundabout and we'll have a look the other way. And if you look on the left hand side, that's the valley we've come down with all the rain. Quite bizarre. And then you look to the right, where we're going, and it's blue skies. Both sides of that mountain. So with this route completed, we can have a look at our scoreboard. This is the fifth route that we'll have done and I think we're going to give Sogna Fillet Route, a huge 9 out of 10. So join us next time when we visit the spectacular waterfalls at Billingen. We hide in a tunnel because it's raining so much. We take a wrong turning and end up on the Gamla Strynersfell Wegen by accident. The Route 258, we see spectacular waterfalls in the snow. We ride on a clay road that's potholed and so slippy I should never have been there. We ride past snow banks and frozen lakes. There's rainbows coming out of the lakes. And then there's more rainbows coming out of the hills. And then there's more rainbows on the road. And then there's more rainbows coming out of different hills. And eventually we find tarmac. I've never been so relieved. We head towards Garanga and it's getting wetter. This time I managed to find the Garanga Trollstegen turn off instead of missing it like I did last time and it gets colder and wetter and then colder and then even wetter and eventually it gets even wetter but we start to see the edge of Garanga and we head down there for the evening. All that and more next time on Wilbur's Arctic Adventure.